Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Now, yes, we've got our favourite Land Rover Jeep. It's a Jeep behind us. And customer's complaint was a really bad noise, kind of knocking, banging, really heavy noise coming from the left hand back. We know what that is. I'll show you in a second. It's the spring that's broke. And, but before we lift it up, I just want to get you inside here because we have to do something first inside here before we tackle the spring. So let's get inside the back and see what we need to do. Because this is used as a proper off-road slash farming vehicle, we need to make sure it's right. This is what we need to take off. Our, sh our shock is in behind here for the top of the shock top. And all you need to do is you have a little cover on the top. There's a little uh, Phillips screwdriver in there. We have a couple of clips, which were here and here. Now there should be another two here, but they weren't there. And then we have a couple of T T15 Torx down here, which you can't see down here to remove this plate so we can get this from underneath it so that's what you need to actually take off put the seats down and you can kind of if you're careful and if you just see in here hopefully you can see that you can just see the top of our shock top. We've got three bolts there, which we need to remove. They're 315 mils. Once you remove them, we can then jack the vehicle. So I'm going to remove them. As you can see, there's no point in me showing you because I can't get the camera in there and we do it at the same time. Just going to remove the three. Then we'll get up on the lift properly and then we'll start taking everything else off. Sorted. Right, we've got it up in the air. We have them three bolts loosened. And as you can see, the first obvious thing is this. But what we can also see is the shock of the shock at the top. Top of the shock is all wet. Now I'll try and get you in there with the camera. You can see that kind of the springs in the way, but I'll get when I get it out, you'll see a bit better. It's kind of which came first, the chicken or the egg scenario. Or in this case, which failed first, the shock or the spring? Now, the spring is obviously broke. We can see that. The shock is leaking, end of. But which happened first? It's hard to know. They can both cause each other to happen. That's the thing. But anyway, what we're gonna do is, I ordered everything on this just in case, because when I had a quick look at it, I saw that the fact the spring was broke. So what I did, I said to the customer, I'm gonna order everything and we'll only use what we need to use. At least I'll have it here and then, you know, we'll just use what we've got to use. But because now I can definitely see the, the top of this shock is leaking, we're going to have to replace both shocks, both springs, both um, shock tops. Even though the shock tops mostly aren't gone, if the spring and the shock is gone, just replace the shock top. Just replace the shock top, I'm telling you. So what I'm going to do, whip off the wheel and then we'll get to the actual shock and we'll see what we can do sorted right unfortunately we've got a really kind of poor design the shock is just two bolts here and that's essentially that that's not really a big deal but our brake line is going through the back of our shock on a bracket but it's not detachable i have to separate it and this brake line looks really like it's not going to separate a motor or a brake now, if it breaks, we can make a new one. It's not a big deal, but these are just kind of unexpected things you don't really think of. This is the bracket I'm talking about. It's where the ABS sensor goes, and this is where the brake line feeds through. Now, if they just dish that out so you could pull it out of the way, perfect. But no, they haven't done it that way, and I'm not going to go near that with an angle grinder to try and do that, because if I cut through the brake line, I'm going to be in more trouble. So what I've done is I've squirted a load of WD on it, I'm going to really let this soak in and try and get it off. This is going to be my best chance of getting it off. These are special brake line plies. I've showed these before in my video. But the beauty thing about these is they go over the, the actual bolts and or the nut, sorry, and they completely go around it. So you've got the best chance possible with something like this. I'll try and get you in there with the camera, but I'm not going to be able to film it and do it at the same time because there's just no room. But hopefully... You can see what I'm talking about. This here, I've sprayed loaded WD on it, so it doesn't actually look too bad and wire brushed it, but 
Hopefully it'll come off. If not, we'll just have to replace this line. I'm gonna have to crimp the brake line here to stop it losing all the fluid. Then we're gonna have to bleed the system and all that. It's just a, a, a thing that I could have avoided with. But it is what it is. So I'm gonna let the WD go. Well, I've already kind of let it go on for 10, 15 minutes. Let's see if we can kind of do it. What size it is? 10 mil, most probably. Um, don't know if you can see. You can kind of see, but it's not great. Let's see what happens. My hand's going to get in the way. Now this is going to break. Oh, maybe not. Oh, okay. Just crushed my thumb now. Right, let me just squeeze that brake line so we don't lose all the fluid and uh, get these bolts off. Sorted. Now, we've undone that. I've taken off the ABS um, plugs, just lift them out. We've got an 18 mil spanner and a 21 mil socket so we're going to whip out the two main bolts what i would suggest if you're doing this yourself sometimes you can buy a complete unit especially obviously we are changing everything if you're not then obviously don't but because we've got a leaky shock and a broken spring we might as well just replace everything you can sometimes buy the whole unit complete already built up and you just shove it in which is a lot easier especially if you haven't got spring compressors because some spring compressors well all spring compressors are kind of dangerous and some of them are really dangerous that's just kind of an easy way if you don't have all the tools and it can make your life a hell of a lot easier Once you have something like that, it's annoying. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't miss it. turned on but these bolts like they feel like they're kind of stuck in so what you want to do is put the nut back till it's flush with the bolt and then get a hammer but don't be really smacking this if it doesn't come out there's other ways of doing it don't get in the way of the camera That seems really tight. I don't like it. But you can put, if I get the right size, we'll put um, an 18 mil socket on this and we'll try and spin it around that way. This is going to be pretty awkward, maybe a bit more lube, possibly a bit of heat here uh, with the map gas, so I think I'll just heat that slightly with the map gas, put a bit more lube, keep going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, there's no point me showing that because that's going to be seriously boring, 
So backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And uh, we'll get them out and then we'll get the shot down. Lovely. I, I kind of wish I showed you, but I didn't. Matte gas, very, very cheap. Everyone should, that works on cars should really have one of these. They're not expensive. I don't have the big, the big bottle of gas. I just have this. And yeah, big bottle of gas I could use a couple of times, but it's not worth me getting all the licenses and all the crap for it for the time I would use it. This has really pulled me out of a lot of crap. All I did is heat it here, two or three minutes, sprayed some WD-40 down the bolt in between, and then literally forwards and backwards a few times. And you can see now it's, it's, it's loose. Don't try and smack it if it's that hard. All you're gonna end up doing is damaging it, bending it, doing something. The rust and crack was built up in the middle. Believe me, this is the best way of doing it. It really doesn't take long. And now, just the weight of the hammer, and before anyone says, yes, I know there's no nut there, but this is just the weight of the hammer. And it's coming off. You know, so this could be hot, so I have to be careful. No, it's not hot. So that's how simple it is. Don't try and, you know, if you've got an air tool as well, the air tool's good. You can always set the, you can always set it down low, but the vibrations help as well. It's not just, sometimes air tools, you have to be careful because you can break stuff with it, but if you turn it down low, but the vibrations help loosen it as well as turning it at the same time, so. And there you go, you can see the rust that was kind of built up in there and that's why it wouldn't come down. But as you can see, absolutely no damage done to that bolt whatsoever. Because if you start having to drill it out or cutting it or doing something, you're just here for hours and hours and hours and it's just really not worth it. So the same thing again with the bottom bolt. Now, only problem with the bottom bolt is this ABS wire is in the way. You have to be really careful with the bottom bolt. tight like the top bolt so that's obviously handy and there we go and there we have it the second one have to be careful here Actually, also it's broke at the top. The spring is broken at the top as well as the bottom. Nice. Right, what I've got to do is wiggle this out, pull the bottom pin out for the brake. See if this comes out nice and easy, or is it going to be? Oh no, nice and easy. There we go. That's what holds the actual brake into the back of this shock. Now we can take it out like that. So it's just to separate this now. And there we go. But as you can see, oh, what we caught on. As you can see, it's broken on the top one as well. There's a couple of bits we need from this. The rubber here, the bump stop in there, and this little cover here, and that's it. Everything else will be replaced. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get set up with the spring clamp and move everything. Have a cup of cocoa. Drink some chocolate because it's nice. And a cup of tea, maybe. Or maybe both at once. Who knows? Then we'll turn the camera back on. And uh, we'll get this side done. Lovely. Right, time to compress the spring, and I hate doing this job. I am in the process of getting a different machine for this, but we haven't got it yet. This was the top of the spring that actually broke, so it broke in two places, the top and the bottom. But anyway... Now, I've kind of put this together as such, but there's a few things 
you need to be aware of. These do have a way to go in the sense of, just take it all off, the spring can only go one way. As you can see, this is flat compared to this side, which is a lot more open. So there is like a, you know, an, an upside down. You can put the spring upside down. So there is, a, there is a right way for the spring to go. If the springs are look the same both ends, well, then there really isn't. Some, some springs are taller and thinner one end. There's just loads of things. But, so there's a few things we have to use from our old one. This is the top rubber here. So we can use that and we can line that up with our old marks. So we know that that used to sit there. Put our bump stop in, put our washer in, and then for our shop top. Now, I know, you can see we've got three bolts here on the shop top, and if you look at the side of it, there is one end higher than the other. Now I know from the old one that the, the, this bolt was directly opposite these bolts. So I know once I put that in that kind of a position, I now know that we're quite close. Now don't get me wrong, you can kind of turn this when it's on, it's just a bit more awkward. So you want to get it as close as you can first, just to make it easier when you're reinstalling it. The other thing is, we'll just move this move it this way. Just want to get these little holes lining up with here. And again, not that it's not crucial, but you know, we might as well. So that's not it either. Let's turn it around one more time. Now, they line up with there. That's up there. That lines up with there. So I now know that's more or less kind of right. Now, we need to put it in our spring compressor. Might have to change the prongs on this one. I can see already we do. So you just swap these. Once I swap these around, I'll continue. Okay, I've got everything set up. I really don't like being close to these springs, but I kind of have to be. What I'm going to do, put this up here, make sure it goes through everything. It does line up the bottom with the cutout like it's supposed to be. So if we're now twisted that way, I need the single piece to be opposite. twist like that right we are kind of really close at that type of point just if I can get that on there I feel a lot safer now there is special chains and stuff to go over here but i can tell you now if that was going to go the little chain you get isn't going to stop it there is a special cage as well that kind of comes down in four like curves around it but even that i'm telling you if it's going to go it's going to go it's not they're not going to really do any good um well the big cage might but the little chains that go around these just don't right i just want to make sure we're okay you can see we are slightly off there so that's better that single hole is more or less at a 90 degree angle from that it's not it's not it's not but it's not far away so we'll get that and like I said if you don't have the top right you can actually bolt the top in and twist the bottom it is kind of difficult but you can do it so don't worry about if you haven't got the top perfectly right but we have a little number here on our top of our shop top I'll show you in a second and I know from the number on the old shop top that that's supposed to be facing that way. So we should be 98%, we should be there. Now, I'm gonna keep going a bit more. It's gonna make it easier for me to put this home. Now that has decided to 
not tighten. A few ways of doing it. You can get a vice grip right at the top of the shot, not the bottom, at the top, where it will not go past the um, seal. If you put vice grips at the bottom, you'll damage the seal. Or the other way is doing what I'm doing. Get an 18mm socket, hold it, which is a 6mm is this, 6mm Allen key, and tighten. Now all I've got to remember is, when I get close, is make sure the bottom is in the right place, which is there. So, a bit more before we worry about that. And that's, that's all the way. We've actually compressed the spring more than we need to, which is not a problem. All I've got to do now is make sure I have the spring in the right position when I release the pressure, which is there. Release the pressure. Pressure's released. And there we go. One spring all together. Oh, in place. Now. This was also on it, so we'll put that back. And now we can shove that back in, sorted. Right, as you can see, I was a little bit off. Not fully straight, but it doesn't matter. Just so you can see with the old one, like most of them will only really fit one way. You can see there's a bigger gap here between these two studs than there is between these. So it can only fit one way. So this is why it's best to line it up as best you can because it makes it easier. I'm a little bit off, not to worry. The hardest thing is lifting this up and getting a couple of bolts. I just wedged um, a big socket under there which held up enough for me just to hand tighten the bolts on the top because that's all they are, they're just hand tight. So now the hand tight, I should be able to twist this kind of straight. Um, let me get this one. You can see that now, I think, is, yeah, it's there. So, but the, the straighter you get it, or the closer you get it, the better, because otherwise, if it's right around here and you're completely 180 degrees off, it's a nightmare, because you're fighting against the friction of the rubber and everything. Um, and some of, them are, um, some of them are plastic housings and you can't do that, so you have to be kind of 100% on else you'll break them. We're not on this, we're okay now. Yeah, we're okay. I'm just gonna clean these off, put some molly grease in there first. It'll make it so much easier if we ever have to take that off again inside here. still a tiny bit off not much but enough to cause us a problem I think that's it hopefully you can see this I'm not getting in the way that's better go put the bottom bolt on right one thing I didn't check is a connection up here fully screwed I didn't have the ABS sensor the right way Or did I? Oh, I did. Maybe it was a different way than the other one, was it? 
There we go, in my rush, because, you know, just one of the things. I built up both shocks together, and I've actually put the wrong shock on this side. It fits in, it's just the ABS sensor. That's the only real difference. The ABS sensor's on the other way, which isn't right. So I'm just, I'm gonna swap everything around. There's no point me showing you that on camera. I'll just swap everything around. Once I've done that, we'll, we'll continue at this point. I remember saying to the customer, I'm surprised because this spring is broken. I don't see the Jeep kind of at an angle. The Jeep kind of looked level. And the reason is, is because the other side has broke as well. Not as bad as the first side, but it's still broke. So that's why they look kind of even. I've also noticed this brake line, as you can see here, is very, very rusty. We don't have time to fix it today, but we can at least tell them that, you know, the brake line needs repairing. Also, the brake, sh the brake shoes or the brake hubs, they are really bad, very rusty. There's just hardly anything left and then they're rusty completely through. So I'm gonna need some new hubs as well. All right, this is the far side. And as you can see, this one is seized in there. So I end up destroying it. I'll have to replace this one on the far side. I'm not gonna bleed it in this video because I'm, I'm doing a separate video on a new toy I've got on how to bleed brakes. But obviously we've got the ABS sensor on the right way. I've just taken off the uh, brake line clamp. All I've got left to do is put on these two bolts and I'm gonna do them to a, a heavy grunt. Anyone that watches my channel should know what that means. Then all we gotta do is tighten the ones inside and put all the trim back and then we are good to go. New shocks, springs and shock tops on. Sorty. Okay, so when you do anything with your suspension at all, you're gonna want to get it tracked. So, cause we've taken the shock off, we're gonna have to get it tracked. End of story. Even if you loosen the shock, get it tracked. Just get it tracked. That's all I can really show you now. Got all this back together. I've got to make the pipe for the far side. I've done videos on how to do that. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to bleed this with the new toy I've got. So you'll see another video with a, a brake bleeder toy. It's awesome, you're gonna to have to see it. And obviously just uh, tighten the bolts back inside and put the plastics back on. But I wanna quickly show you these shocks and give you another way of how to test shocks once they're out. So on the floor, we have the two shocks. We have one that is physically leaking. The one we could tell was leaking, it's all wet. And we have this one that isn't wet, it just looks old. So how do you know if they're any good? Well, this one, as you can see, it just falls down. Um, that's just the weight of my hand putting that down and it doesn't come back up. This one, on the other hand, takes a bit more pressure, but I can still do it one hand and it does kind of pop up, but It's not popping up fast enough and it's too easy for me to push down. I should be really struggling to push that down and I'm just not. So what, what you're really looking for is something you're struggling to push down and it comes up nice and even, nice and easy and not grunchy at all. So there we go. Both of them are baggage. So that's it. That's how to do rear shock springs and shock tops. I would advise you if you're doing one of these things just to do all three of them because it's gonna save you a lot of time hassle and money if you just replace one thing like if we was just to put a spring in there that's going to snap because the shock isn't supporting it properly it's going to snap you're going to have to go back in there and do it all again it's going to cost you more by right once one of them's gone just replace all of them and what i mean is if a shock's gone replace the shock the spring and the shock top vice versa whatever just replace them all because honestly in the long run you will appreciate and it will save you money and hassle and time so that's it. Look, hope it helps. Thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.